attic antennas. Are they any good? Can we really use them to communicate on amateur radio? Can we do that locally? Can we do that globally? Well, today I'm going to talk to you about my UHF VHF antenna that I first installed in my attic. It was the first antenna I ever owned. First thing I ever keyed up on and hit a local repeater. I've also talked all around the world on that antenna using digital modes, of course. I'll talk about two antennas today that I think are good to use if you have confined space, you're trying to stay covert, stealth in an HOA, or you're just looking for a small form factor that doesn't detract from the appearance of your home on the outside. I know some of us love our antennas. Some people don't like the looks of antennas. Either way, these will work. I'm going to show you what they are. I'm going to demonstrate how you can communicate with them. Move on to our general check-in. This is Kilo Mike 4, Foxtrot Pop Alpha. Whenever you're checking in, please set your call sign slowly in standard IT phonetics. That control will acknowledge each station individually, so please wait until acknowledge the prior station before you can transmit it. In other words, please check in one at a time. Let's move on to our mobile port one short off half stations for the Net control. Net control, please check in Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf, Palm Harbor, no traffic for the net. Kilo 4, Bravo, Mike, Golf. Next up, mobile insurance. That was me keying up using my attic antenna to check into the daily Eagle Net that's part of the NI4CE repeater system. That is a repeater system. Several repeaters here spread out across the central Florida area that are interconnected when you key up on one, it is repeated across them all, thus connected. The SARTnet is also a connected repeater system that runs from the southern tip to the northern border of the state of Florida. It may even go a little bit outside the state of Florida, I think. That is another repeater system that once you hit one repeater, it transmits to them all. That's using my attic antenna. Both of these repeater systems, uh, the NI4CE is used a lot for recreational and uh, nets. Uh, the SARnet is also used for nets and primarily for emergency communications. We do tend to have emergencies here in the state of Florida with weather events. I can do this with my attic antenna. Here's something else I love to do with my attic antenna. Go for With an attic antenna, you can also use digital modes. Now, my attic antenna is communicating with a hotspot here in my shack. You, of course, if you have a repeater near you that is digital, whether that's D-Star, Fusion, or in my case, DMR, you can communicate all around the world. Again, just from an attic antenna. And I'll do that right now by using the parrot feature in DMR. This is KD4BMG testing with Parrot, test, test, check, check. What's the quality of my transmission with my attic antenna? This is KD4BMG testing with Parrot, test, test, check, check. What's the quality of my transmission with my attic antenna? There you go. We got it. My preferred digital mode in UHF VHF is DMR. Why is that? Well, because there's the opportunity for competition. If you like D-Star, well, then you're stuck with ICOM, which may not be bad. I like ICOM. I have ICOM gear. I love my 7300 and my 705, and they license out to one other manufacturer. If you are with Yesu, you have System Fusion. But Fusion and D-Star are proprietary to those two manufacturers, so there's virtually no competition. In DMR, it is a mode that many manufacturers utilize and build equipment for. So you have the opportunity 
to have some competition. And competition drives down cost and drives up features. That's why I like DMR. Some people say DMR is confusing and hard to learn. Well, I think if you connect with the right manufacturer and distributor, that problem kind of goes away because they build support bases to help you with that. DMR is not difficult for me. Um, I work a lot in um, pivot tables and spreadsheets, and essentially DMR code plugs are a group of interrelated spreadsheets. If you follow the path, you can get the job done. I prefer Bridgecom Systems for selling any tone gear, and any tone gear is my favorite brand of DMR equipment. It's clean spectrally, and it's high quality equipment. You don't see any tone throwing out new radios every other week with a different color, different screen, different knob, different feature, different this, different that. Just another Me Too with no real differentiator and poor quality. Anytone focuses on quality, and that's why I prefer Anytone gear. And I prefer Bridgecom because Bridgecom has one sole focus, DMR functionality through Anytone equipment. You can buy your Anytone equipment from any retailer you want, and many retailers carry that and I spend a lot of money at the retailers. I have purchased my own Anytone gear through Bridgecom. The 578 that's in my shack in full disclosure was provided to me by Bridgecom probably about a year ago. I have purchased my own HTs, my own hotspot, all my other gear that is Anytone. I purchased myself through Bridgecom because they focus on Anytone and DMR. They're the experts and they have a support base. So enough of that. So you need to think about safety when you're putting an attic antenna over your head. And that's a problem if you're putting it in over your head. And I would say this, you need to think about a couple of things. First of all, if you have a metal roof, you're kind of toast. And I mean metal on the outside of your roof on the top instead of shingles or tile, you have metal your signal's not getting out. If you have a foil, aluminum foil barrier on the underside of your decking, if you look up in your attic and you see foil, you've got a Faraday cage. Don't frustrate yourself trying to put up a antenna in your attic. But now let's talk safety. The FCC requires you to operate safely. The FCC can knock on your front door and demand to see your analysis of your R exposure for your shack setup and they provide tools to allow you to measure RF exposure. So before you go putting any attic overhead, which never put it overhead, never put any antenna directly over your head, um, look at those charts, graphs, and tools and determine where the best place is to put your attic antenna protect you and your family that's occupying your home or your neighbors if you live in an attached type dwelling. RF signals, you know, and electronics don't mix real well, so don't put your antenna over top of an air handler for your HVAC. Don't put your antenna over top of a smoke detector in your home because smoke detectors don't like RF, especially UHF and VHF, so get yourself some distance between those devices. Now let's talk a minute about the specific antennas that I use. And of course, you have a lot of options. I'm showing two that work well for me. The first one is this ground plane from Arrow Antenna. I'll leave a link to Arrow Antenna, not an affiliate link in any way, shape, or form, but just so you have access to what I used here. A J-pole is a fantastic antenna to put in your attic space, but a J-pole could be like five to six feet tall. My attic space has a 40 inch floor to peak uh, space. And so I needed something that was very compact and both of these solutions are very compact and why I've chosen them. If you can fit a J-pole in, good grief, go J-pole. It's gonna be a little bit more simple probably than putting together this Arrow antenna. Now, I originally purchased this second antenna because I thought that maybe you know, it would be helpful if I showed you just on the screen how small and compact this is because I can't get really close to my attic antenna today. Why is that? Well, <laughs> because uh, I'm an older guy and it's more difficult for me to get into some of the spaces now several years after I installed that. If I needed to, I could go back there and get real close to that and do some modification. Really, it needs no mod, but you know, I'd have a backache for a couple of days. So. I just thought I would show you how small this antenna is. That is probably about 18 inches 
on the length of these four uh, legs that make up the ground plane and they go on this block and then you've got two uprights one looks like it's mm, six inches and one again maybe 18 inches and these are your UHF and VHF elements this is your ground plane that go on this block but then you can bolt onto any type of in my case a piece of PVC that has a bracket that's screwed into the wall that's what this is and why I use it I use it because I was space constrained. For me, it's in my attic because I live in an HOA. Get your J pole, get your arrow antenna ground plane and put them outside if you can and properly install them for grounding and lightning protection. For me, attic space is all I can do because I live in the HOA. This works fantastic for me. So what's the second antenna that I have on the screen for us to talk about today? It's the 70 centimeter Tac Yagi from Chameleon Antenna, which gets us on the 70 centimeter band as well as GMRS. And while it's usually on my antenna wall, I had it with me because I was doing some traveling and I wanted to have the portable antenna with me. And that is uh, one of its great features is that it is an antenna that you can take portable in a backpack because it completely breaks down. So it is robust enough to be a permanent outside antenna or something you pack in your backpack for emergency communication or some other type of activity that you're going and providing a communication service to. You can see also that it is very small form factor. So I've also put this in my attic space and actually put it on a rotor so that I could steer it in the direction of a very specific repeater that I was attempting to communicate with. So what I've tried to demonstrate to you is small form factor UHF, VHF antennas that can be very stealth Again, if stealth isn't necessary because you don't live like me in an HOA by my choice for very good reasons, and you can put up any antenna outside that you want and then get the best antenna possible for your situation, get it up and have a blast with it. If you're looking for very discreet, small form factor, you want to be stealth, you want to hide, you can put these up outside if you kind of disguise them around some brush or shrubbery or in a tree, or in my case, in my attic space and these antennas absolutely get the job done. UHF VHF is a great way for people to get entry into amateur radio to determine if it's a hobby or a way of life that they want to participate in. The cost to entry is lower than say HF. HF antennas can be more expensive and HF rigs most certainly are more expensive. And you can do UHF and VHF with the tech license, the very entry level into amateur radio in the United States of America. So these are some of my suggestions and recommendations. If you're looking for a UHF VHF antenna in a small form factor space and trying to be stealth in the HOA as well, if you want to go and deploy on the road, on the go in an MCOM situation, here's something that is small enough that you can put it in a tiny little case and take it with you on the go and be ready for emergency situations. Multiple antennas, multiple options. That's one of the great things about amateur radio. We have so many choices today. Hope you found this useful and a little bit enjoyable. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.